Hi everyone, it's Denise from Salvaged Inspirations and thanks so much for joining me today. Today I'm sharing how to achieve this vintage duck egg blue finish. Uh, last week I had a tutorial on the blog about do-it-yourself moldings and trim. However, I've received a lot of emails and comments in the comment section asking how did I achieve the paint finish. So today I'm sharing how to achieve the exact same colors, the exact same antiquing, the exact same finish on a smaller project, a cutlery box. So just let me get set up and I'll be right back. I started by applying moldings to this cutlery box and then giving it two coats of D Vintage Duck Egg Blue by Dixie Belle. I always use my water mister to spray my brush just so the paint glides a little more easily seeing as Dixie Belle paint is nice and thick, it has great coverage, it, the water mister just makes it a little easier to glide on nicely. The brush I'm using is Dixie Belle's Mini and you'll notice that I'm pouncing it in between the trim and the moldings just so I can get the vintage duck cake in all the crevices. When I actually did this finish on the dresser last week, I did sand in between each coat because I do like my furniture it's super smooth. Uh, however, on this cutlery box, I'm just painting the two coats and not worrying about sanding it down. Once I totally finished painting the first coat, I was running a little short on time, so I used my heat gun to speed up the drying process. Then I went on to the second coat. Once I was happy with the coverage, um, and again, when I did the furniture, I did give a light sanding between each coat. However, I'm not doing it with this cutlery box. Uh, but once I'm happy with the coverage, then I move on to doing my whitewash. So here I'm pouring some cotton in Dixie Belle paint, and I'm adding a little bit of water to create a wash. Um, I did not measure, I just eyeballed it, um, but I'm guessing it was probably about one quarter water to three quarters paint, uh, but I just want it to be a nice watery mixture, but yet still have coverage. Once the cotton and the water were mixed together, it turns out to be like a creamy mixture, but it, as you can see, it kind of drips off the stir stick. Now for the fun part. Taking a regular paper towel, I took about two squares of a regular paper towel and I crumple it up in my hand. Then I apply the watery white mixture onto the cutlery box making sure that it does get into the crevices and that I have a decent coverage all over the vintage duck egg blue. I'll do the front of the box because I worked in sections actually. You don't want to do your whole piece at the same time. And just like when I'm working with furniture, I do one drawer at a time or one side at a time. I don't use the wash on the entire piece because it will dry on you and you won't have time to manipulate it. Um, so as you can see, I'm getting it into all the crevices and then I just take my crumpled paper towel and I dab. I dab at it so it's removing some of the white so the vintage duck cake can show through. The misting, the water mister really comes in handy here because when I spray it and I re-dab it with the paper towel, kind of pouncing it in different directions so I kind of get a, a, a different modeling effect uh, throughout the piece or the, the area I'm working in. But as you can see, the more I spray it and the more I dab off, the more of the vintage duck cake shows through. This creates a really beautiful finish. And the nice part about this is you can take as much or as little off as you like. You just have to keep respraying it and dabbing it again. Once your paper towel gets a little too wet, you might want to replace it with another couple of squares, uh, which is what I did when I worked on the sides of uh, this box. Um, but again, if you like a more cloudy, dreamy look, you can leave more of the whitewash on 
If you want more of the vintage duck egg coming through, you can just give it a few sprays and you just take it kind of layer by layer and see what you like. There is no right or wrong with this. It's whatever look you really, really like for your piece. Um, so it's really fun to play around with it. I just love this type of finish. It's absolutely beautiful. Once I was happy with how the top looked, I went ahead and I did each of the sides, again, trying to get the same look as I achieved on the top because I want everything to all blend in nicely. So now for some fun antiquing. Antiquing is usually done with glaze or wax, but here I'm using paint. I have a redesign with Prima stenciling brush, round stenciling brush, and I find these stiffer brushes better to use for this technique. I'm also using Dixie Belle's chocolate. And as you see, I use very little paint. I just dab it onto the lid, take very little, and brush off the majority of the paint onto a styrofoam plate. So this is a very, very dry brush I'm working with. And I start by adding the dry brushing to the trim and the moldings that I've adhered. And then working my way around the box where I want the distressing to be, mostly in the corners and around the edges. And I just keep on layering and adding on more in a circular motion. paint goes a long way so the key to getting this nice blended distress look using paint is having the driest brush possible um, and then just using small circular motions in the areas that you want to look distressed and you can keep layering if if your first time around you find that it's not showing up quite enough as you'd like it to uh, just go in, add the tiniest little bit more paint, then again wipe off the excess and come back in and put on an extra layer of the distressing. But it's much easier to work slower with this than to have too much paint and kind of muck it up. Uh, so speak of mucking it up here. I did add too much. I had too much paint on my brush So I'm using my spray bottle giving it a little squirt of water and wiping it off with a clean paper towel and Then I will rub off the excess because obviously I had too much paint on the brush And I'll just go in there and start doing the circular motions again So if by chance you do make a mistake and there's too much paint on your brush Water works as an eraser, so just use a little squirt of water along with a clean paper towel and it should come right off for you. For the finishing touch, I use Dixie Belle's Gilding Wax in Hammered Copper. I find that the orange undertones of this hammered copper work really beautifully with the vintage duck egg. So I just put some on my finger and I hit all the high areas with the moldings that I've applied. It really finishes this piece off beautifully. It just adds that little bit of extra glitz. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and thanks again for joining me today. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love it if you followed me here on YouTube. There's also over 400 do-it-yourself furniture painting tutorials over on salvagedinspirations.com. Again, thank you for joining me today and please stay safe and healthy.